Hey ladies and gentlemen of YouTube, you're watching Channel Hot Monkey and today we're going to talk about computers that changed the world. They are everywhere around us and without them life as we know it would be a whole different story. So in this video we'll go back and take a look at the ones that had the greatest impact not just on the industry but on how we live. We'll start from the turbulent times between 1943 and 1945 when a series of computers were developed by British codebreakers. The machines had one specific purpose, to decrypt high-level German army messages during World War II. As history would show, the computers developed within the program were a great success and they became an important source of ultra-intelligence which had a significant contribution to Allied victory. Even though 10 of them were eventually built, each taking up a large room, they are all known by one name, the Colossus, the machine considered to be the first electronic digital computer with programmability. It was designed by engineer Tommy Flowers and influenced by Alan Turing's use of probability in cryptanalysis. Colossus used vacuum tubes in order to perform Boolean operation and also required the physical manipulation of telephone jack plugs, cords and switches in order for it to be programmed for new tasks. Because the sole purpose of Colossus was labeled as high security, it remained a secret for nearly three decades after World War II. It was during the 1970s that information about the machine became public. Even though most of the Colossus computers were dismantled, a fully functional replica was completed in 2007 and can now be seen at the National Museum of Computing at Bletchley Park, UK. While the British were using Colossus computers to gain an advantage against their war enemies, on the other side of the world, another computer was being designed for military purposes. The Electronic Numerical Integrator and Computer, better known as the ENIAC. Funded by the US Army, the construction for ENIAC was done in top secrecy. It was built at the Moore School of Electronic Engineering of the University of Pennsylvania between 1943 and 1945. ENIAC was the first electronic general-purpose computer, Turing complete digital and had the ability to efficiently solve a large class of numerical problems through reprogramming. It was primarily used for artillery calculations for the US Army and also had a role in the design of the hydrogen bomb. After being publicly announced in 1946, the historical computer was often referred to as the big brain. It weighed around 27 tons, occupied 167 square meters, and consumed 150 kilowatts of electricity, which led to the rumor that whenever ENIAC was used, lights in Philadelphia would dim. Some theorists believe that, for a decade, until a 1955 lightning strike, ENIAC may have easily ran more calculations than all mankind had done up to that point. In 1948, ENIAC was improved with a storage programming mechanism thanks to the concept implemented in another historical computing machine. Introducing the Manchester Baby, the world's first stored program computer. Officially called the Small Scale Experimental Machine, this computer ran its first program on June the 21st, 1948. Initially not being intended for practical use, it was used as a test for the Williams tube, an early form of computer memory. Unlike previous computers that required physical manipulation for reprogramming, the Manchester Baby was capable of storing program instructions in electronic memory. Although considered small and primitive by the standards of the time, it was the first working machine to contain all the elements essential for a modern electronic computer. Jump a couple of decades forward and we start to see some innovations that would eventually lead to the age of the personal computer. Even though it was never intended for homes, 
The Xerox Alto from 1973 could be considered as one of the first PCs as it was designed for individual use within Xerox facilities and several universities. It is also considered to be the first computer to combine a graphical user interface with a mouse-driven input invented by Douglas Engelbart. By including other features like a keyboard, removable data storage, networking, what you see is what you get printing, and email, the Alto marked a radical leap in the evolution of how computers interact with people, influencing the development of future computers that would eventually make their ways into our homes. And before we knew it, the first finally came knocking on our door. In 1975, MITS released what was recognized as the spark that ignited the PC revolution, the Altair 8800. Running on an 8-bit Intel 8080 CPU and a 256-byte memory, the Altair was sold in build-it-yourself kits for less than $400. Instead of a keyboard, it had toggle switches for input and its display consisted of nothing more than a front-facing panel with LED indicators. Designer Ed Roberts initially intended to sell a few hundred kits to hobbyists, but was taken by surprise after the sales were counted by the thousands in just the first month. At the time of its release, the Altair also grabbed the attention of two young programmers who would soon write the computer's first programming language, Altair Basic. In the years to come, the two young programmers would form a company that will make another epochal impact on the history of computing. The company's name was Microsoft. It wouldn't take long for personal computers to adopt characteristics that Xerox didn't commercialize with the Alto. One company that would follow that concept was Apple. In 1976, Apple released the Apple Computer One, which was designed by Steve Wozniak. But the real boom from this company came one year later with the release of Apple II, the computer that would set the standards for PCs of the time. After being introduced in 1977 at the West Coast Computer Fair by Steve Jobs, it became one of the first highly successful mass-produced microcomputer products. It came with a microprocessor running at 1 MHz, two game paddles, 4 KB of RAM, an audio cassette interface for loading programs and storing data, as well as the integer basic programming language built into the ROMs. The Apple II was also one of the first computers with a color display. Another thing that made it stand out was its expansion capabilities made possible by its eight expansion slots. The core philosophy of the Apple II computer may be best described by the beginning of a detailed description Steve Wozniak wrote for his design. To me, a personal computer should be small, reliable, convenient to use, and inexpensive. The model was released in a series of computers whose production ran all the way to 1993, at which point they sold in nearly 6 million units. Jump a few years forward and we get the IBM 5150, a product that was so successful it actually changed how people thought of a PC. Even though the generic term personal computer was in use before, because of the success of the IBM personal computer, the term PC came to mean more specifically a desktop microcomputer compatible with IBM's PC products. After developing the computer in 12 months, faster than any other hardware product in its history, IBM released the personal computer in August of 1981. The IBM PC was powered by an Intel 8088 microprocessor running at 4.77 MHz and contained 40K of read-only memory and 16K of user memory. The operating system PC-DOS was not available on cassette, so the BASIC system could only run the Microsoft BASIC programming language. It had a starting price of $1,565 for a BASIC home version that attached to an audio tape cassette player and a television set. For extra options like its own display, a printer, diskette drives, and extra memory, customers would have to pay extra. For reference, two decades earlier, an IBM computer would cost as much as $9 million and required a staff of 60 people to keep it functioning. 
Today, most computer historians agree that the IBM 5150 was the computer that launched the PC revolution. IBM may have launched it, but many believe that it was Apple who took the industry to a whole new level that we know and use to this day. As we saw earlier, the first computer to present a mouse-driven graphical user interface was the Xerox Alto. But what Xerox didn't commercialize with the Alto, Apple revolutionized with the first mass-market personal computer featuring an integral graphical user interface and mouse. You guessed it, the Macintosh. Hardware-wise, the Macintosh was powered by a Motorola 68000 that ran at 7.83 MHz. Initially, it came with 128K RAM of memory, but after it became obvious that this was insufficient, Apple released a 512K RAM version, often called the Fat Mac. Did I mention that it had no hard drive? But where this computer truly shined was its user interface. Before the Mac, using computers was not as simple as we know today. To access any program, you would have to have knowledge of proper command lines. Once you had them running, the only way you could interact with them was using the keyboard. With the Mac, on the other hand, starting a program would simply depend on you finding a program icon and double-clicking it using your mouse. Priced at $2,495, the Mac was not a cheap computer. Despite what newer generations might think, it actually didn't really have an instant success. It was expensive, there weren't many programs for it, and tools for desktop publishing had not yet been developed. But that didn't matter all that much, because very soon everything fell into place for Apple and the Macintosh. Whether it's because of true innovation or simply thanks to good marketing, to this day the original Macintosh is considered by many to be the computer that changed everything. The history of modern computers is filled with many great machines that had a great impact on the world around us and the way people get things done in everyday life. Because of their impact on the world, we can say without a doubt that they truly are one of the most important things that man invented. Hope you enjoyed the video. This is Channel Hot Monkey, signing off. Stay strong.